Now on to the programme for car owners and car users, Top Gear. Hello and a very good Tuesday evening to you. Welcome once again to another edition of Top Gear. And after the bank holiday weekend, which, let's face it, was a bit of a washout weather-wise, no doubt lots of you are thinking forward to summer holidays. And of course, every year, thousands, literally thousands of British motorists make the journey across the channel looking for sun and whatever on the continent. And in this edition of Top Gear, Angela Rippon will be looking at some of the problems associated with driving on the continent. From Radio 1, my friend and colleague Dave Lee Travis will be around telling us all about his dragster, The Needle. And we have Top Gear's very own economy run, and looking at that will be Barry Gill. But right now, here's Judith Jackson. One of the best ways to get away from the hurly-burly of noisy city life is to set off for the countryside at the weekend. There you can wander about, breathing in the fresh air, revelling in the sounds of a whole new environment. Or you can run drag racing and experience an entirely different range of smells and noises here at Santa Pod Raceway. I frightened myself the very first time I got into here for two reasons. The first one was the obvious reason, that I'd never driven a car as powerful as this before, and I didn't quite know what to expect when I put my foot down. The second reason was that we had a, a, a tyre that was slightly down on pressure, which makes a lot of difference, and the whole car shook, and it shook so violently that my eyes sort of did that. And it was like looking through a bathroom window, you know that stippled glass, where you can see colours but you can't see shapes? And I was just going down, I was doing about 150, and I couldn't see a thing. So I backed off, and then everything came back, and I sort of pulled the chute, and wondered what had happened. They're actually, the body panels had twisted right out of shape. Drag racing, in fact, um, started when I got involved in, in fact, I was responsible for starting off the DJ race days at Brands Hatch and places like that. Then the BBC took it on because they realized there was a lot of uh, money they could make for charity. And out of that, there were two of us mainly that split into different directions. Noel Edmonds went off into circuit racing and I got involved with these loonies round here in drag racing because it's, um, it's a world unto itself. There's nothing quite like drag racing. But what's the real appeal of it? After all, it's, a, it's all over in 10 seconds. Ah, uh, yes. Well, a lot of people say that. that uh, first of all, their, their usual first reaction is, well, there's nothing to it because all you do is put your foot down on the floor and keep it there until you go through the gantry. Uh, the first thing is, that you have got to keep the car straight. When we're talking about pro-fuel dragsters, which are the fastest vehicles in Great Britain, if not the world, actually, at the moment, uh, they're far faster than Formula One cars. You're talking of speeds of 100 miles an hour from a standing start in something just over one second. 
And that sort of g-force that you get when you take off from the line is unlike anything else, and it defies description. Because everything, as I hit, I'm sitting there, trundling away, the moment I hit the loud pedal, everything just shakes, the, the crowd disappear from view, and you're just rocketing towards the, the far end, hoping you've got everything right inside seven seconds. So that's the excitement of it. The needle's an amazing looking machine. It's beautifully turned out. Can you tell us a bit about it? Well, it runs on a mixture of nitromethane and methanol, which is literally rocket fuel. Uh, and depending on the mixture that you give, uh, you can up the combustion of the car. So apart from what you can do mechanically to the car, you can, you can actually change the mixture of fuel and give it that little more bite. So you've got to be very careful, though, because you're constantly racing on the edge of a precipice. If you just go that little bit too far, you can blow the car up. Now today, for example, you have two runs, one of 10 seconds, one of 7 seconds. It's not much. How no. much chance do you um, get to race a car like this during a season? Well, while, while I'm at the race uh, meeting here at Centre Pod, it's purely a matter of mixing with everybody and seeing what their problems are, and seeing whether you can help them out. Not that I'm that mechanically brilliant, but I have a great team around me here. Um, and it's the excitement of watching everybody else getting ready and seeing, seeing somebody blow a motor up and then literally rebuild it, take it to part, rebuild it inside half an hour or something. It's crazy. Only mad lunatics like this can do it. So I get a couple of runs in per day. Uh, as far as how many times during the season, obviously weekends with me doing the breakfast show is the only time I can actually work to earn money. So to go drag racing, I have to literally lose money. Um, but that's the sort of bite that drag racing takes on you. So I put aside, say, three or four, maybe five meetings a year when I come down here and let myself loose in this beast. And I love it every minute of it. But once I get out on the strip and you've got the throb of the eight litres behind you and nitromethane bursting out of the, the headers, uh, there's no way of saying, well, this is going to be fun. You sit there and you've got to, you've got to race seriously. Cold blood.